First, first of all, um, I, I want to make this session in two parts. That one will be even more interactive than the other. So first, we'll just talk a little bit and I'll try to share some of my ideas on what I think about office and culture. Um, but there are so many of us here, and probably there's a lot we can learn from each other. So what I plan is that we have a World Cafe at the end, talking about some of the specific topics that we have, and then we can share experience between us. Does this make sense to you? That then we can profit from all the knowledge in the room, and not just one person, which I don't think is not the best, best way to do it. Cool, so for me to make sense, so I never completely prepare what I'm going to say, uh, and I like to adjust to what people want to hear. So I would really like to know why the hell did you decide to come to a meetup that is about office and culture design? Why, why are you here today? Okay. Thanks for sharing. Yeah. Okay. So for me, this is the second time, <laughs> and I like the, the first one, and I look at this, and oh, all this is not so interesting. But in the end, uh, where, where I work, it's rather fun. We redesign the office and uh -huh. facing some challenge due to this okay. redesign. So probably this will be interesting. Okay. Other ideas? Yeah. Because culture is the most important part in a job. Okay. That's I would like to be what you have to say. <laughs> that's cool, that's cool. Okay. I would say that it's the most important in a job. In, in a job? Okay. Yeah. And w what do you expect to so you'll be here two hours. Uh, what are what are you expected to take out of this? Well, I used to work in a co-working okay. uh, space as an office manager, mm -hmm. and now I also work in another another area. I'm selling offices now, so it's a bit different. But what I see is that people, I have to adjust the culture of a company that wants mm -hmm. to buy an office, and I have to look for a space that will fit the culture of that office. Okay. So I'm looking for things that I can improve in my work. I want to learn a bit of the insights that you learn at the Lemon Works, you know, okay. uh, because some of the common sense ones, you know, that you think, oh, this may work, you know, sometimes when you put it in practice, mm -hmm. you, you see that it doesn't. So it's important to learn from your experience and from everyone's experience and try, uh, try and put it in practice in our company. Then you work okay. So that is why I'm here. Okay. Any of you are designing a, a, a office at the moment or yes, thinking? Or, okay. So maybe you can take some other ideas from other people, from what we'll be talking about. Okay, that's good. good. Anything else? Culture. Culture. Okay. Yeah, it's the most uh, important thing to change in a uh, job transformation, which I'm getting. Uh, any of you had the, the specifically talking about agile culture and like to implement an agile culture within the company that you're in right now? Okay. Okay, that's cool. So maybe we'll have we will have a lot of things to talk about, which is good. Okay, so let's start with that. What, what, so you're saying that culture is the most important thing, Some, someone saying about agile, some about it, saying about the job itself. So what is culture in, a, in an organization for you? The things that you expect from the others, from the company, from the colleagues, from mm -hmm. It's what defines one's identity, and what binds us together, or as a, as a group, or okay. as a group of persons, otherwise it's just Bunch of people in an office. Okay. Sticking okay. towards the common identity. In the common identity. So identity is a word that's repeating. You're saying the behaviors. The behaviors itself. Okay. So it's more like what really happens, right, on the day to day. Do, do you think there is possible to have an organization without culture? It is. It's a mm. culture. That's the culture. Right? <laughs> <laughs> but but it's it's culture. Is is that one, right? So there's always a culture in an organization. Yeah. There are, there's always a set of behaviors. Mm -hmm. uh, and can we actually say if a culture is good or bad? Who is able to say if a, go, uh, a culture is good or bad within an organization? Well, you may not identify what the, the culture is. Okay, so we, we have one idea here, well, which is good. the results. Good. What kind of results? Well, depending on the, what the company does, let's say <coughs> Your product is not so good. Maybe the culture is also not that great. Okay. And the other way around? 
So if your product is really good, does it mean that the culture is really good? No. no. And it's the other, it, and it, does it mean that if the product is not good, the culture is not good? No. no. Mm. So then, how come how come the results have a relationship with culture? If people are happy and this is part of the culture, okay. good, the results will be good. Hopefully, <laughs> we hope so, right? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Hopefully, <laughs> not always. Not always, yeah. I would say. I think it's difficult to define what's good or bad within culture. Yeah. So what's good for me could be bad for you. Yeah. So it, it, for me, it's really no, there's no right or wrong in terms of right. culture. There's things that people identify with it or, or not, and that's it. You have to find your space within that culture. If you like it or not, and then it's up to you to adjust or move to another culture, mm -hmm. another company. Mm -hmm. Okay, so then what's good? or? So there's no good or bad, so every, every culture is good? <laughs> That's what you're saying? No, a good or bad is a perception thing. So you cannot okay. just say something is good because you can have like a very shitty environment, and, but some people think it's good. Okay. But I would say that maybe good and bad might not be the, the best words, but maybe we can look for, does it actually produce the behaviors you're looking for? Because sometimes what happens is that maybe I don't know, you have a company and you, you have a company or organization and you want some kind of behaviors to happen within the organization, but then the culture itself, what really happens, even if you have your values on the wall and a very nice mission, a very nice vision, but then on the day to day, the behaviors are very much far away from what actually you would like them to be. So then I would say that the culture is weak because it's far away from what people would like it to be. First, for many reasons, most probably, and that's uh, one of the things that we have been doing a lot in Lemonworks is going to the organization, talk with them, talking with the people, and understand what are the things that are causing those weak cultures to, to be happening, in which a lot of people within the organization don't actually want to be in an organization with that kind of culture. So that, that's strange, right? So the behaviors are the things that people do, but then when you talk with them, these would be things that they recognize that they didn't want to happen in the organization. But somehow, they happen. Yeah. Okay. And then we can have, of course, a strong culture, which is the more the behaviors are <coughs> close to what actually people would like to have within the, the place they work. Right. So do, do you think you work in a strong or weak culture at this point in time? You, you don't need to answer. You can share if you want to share. If someone wants to share what, what you think if you're in your relation at the moment, what do you think? Is it strong or is it weak and why? Anyone? I just quit after seven years because of the weak culture. Okay. Can you explain what, what in your perspective, what was the weak culture and... There is no culture. So that's the weak one. So it, it was, when you say there is no culture, because remember, we went through that, so there is always a culture. So what yeah. does that mean? That means that general they don't care about okay so anything. the organization don't care about and what people do yeah. but probably they do care about what people do what do they care no, about they care about the results okay so they care about results okay. that, maybe. and you're not results driven so for you it no, doesn't I am, make sense I am, but we have to be okay. uh, people should balance okay a balance okay. will be probably interesting to share within the the, um, then the, the, the World Cafe, what actually made you take, take that decision? Like, I probably, a lot of us already quit, quit some place, not because, I don't know, most of the times it's probably because of the work environment and the culture that the organization has. So I think that's very interesting for us to share so that then we understand what can be the tipping points, what can be the things that made us, okay, do not want to work anymore in a place that we were for seven years, so it's, which is a quite long relationship. So yeah. Uh, usually I think about uh, people in an organization just like a relationship with okay? Just like any other relationship we might like it or not. You feel more close or uh, away from it. Cool. Other examples of either strong or weak uh, cultures that you have right now? Yeah. I just joined a new company and uh, the first thing that, I, that I've done there was a presentation regarding the culture. Okay. And uh, it's uh, amazing because it's for me that it's, uh, I'm new in the company. I look for the culture and values of the company, and uh, I show them. Look, look what you have on the what we have in the internet about our culture, about our values. What what usually what are we doing today, a daily that meet this 
zero things that we have occurred. Zero, zero. Uh, I, I can give any example. They are okay. emissions from the company. They don't have any uh, recycle points. They pretend to uh, recycle paper. Okay. <laughs> and I'm just like, okay. This, this is so it's, 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 it, there's so a mismatch between a what you told that the culture should be and then what it actually is. Exactly. So that, that's exactly something that we'll talk not only about culture, but also about the offices and how far away sometimes can it be what we wanted it to be from what it is. Just to add to a point, I think what can happen is they try and use culture as an excuse to say something about the company. And the reality is your culture is the behavior of your staff what you reward, what you are down upon. And so that is the actual culture, not what's written on the wall. I don't know if anybody remembers what Enron said, but believe me. <laughs> I think it was something like integrity, uh, you know, forward with completely and something of that nature. And if I recall, they all went to jail. So it wasn't really a culture, it was just a bunch of words on the wall. Yeah. I would say that most of the times from my experience from consultancy, behaviors within an organization tend to happen because of procedures that were created or behaviors that were already there. So it's not like sometimes, so sometimes even if the idea of having, uh, let's say, a green company and that, okay, we want to be environmentally friendly, it was something there in the beginning, but then the things that the organization did along the way, did it in a certain way that when the staff then joins, they don't feel the connection with it anymore, and there's no behaviors on the day-to-day, -day. there's nothing that is reinforcing that. Uh, and usually, uh, so what I usually do is like imagine, and this is very common, that uh, a, a company would call me to talk about, okay, I don't know, I wanted more, my, the people, the most common one is like, I would like that people that work with me feel that this is their own company. Okay, this is usually the more, most common one. Okay, um, and the, the question is very simple, it's just, throwing it back. So what do you do for them to know that this is their own com company? Do they actually, do you actually think that this is their own company or do, do you just want them to act like that when it's favorable to you? And there's no, there's no wrong in not being like that, but you need to be real, re you need to be realistic about what actually you're expecting from people and what you're giving them. So it, there needs to be like a correlation between the way people are thinking, the, the way people uh, actually will behave, and what you expect them to do. So, and this mismatch, it's a lot, uh, it happens a lot. Uh, so I, I have, a, a, so there's so many examples. One, of the, the one I like the most is, um, there was this um, company that they, they bought a very, like very fancy mugs, so like people could use, could use them. Um, and the, 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 it was, this was also a rollout, so it was a big company. It was a rollout of the new values and everything. One of the, the, the values was trust, okay? Um, and what happened, uh, what happened was that one of the mugs at some point was missing, okay? This is a, a mug to have in the, in the kitchen, okay? So what happened is that uh, because one of the mugs were, were missing and they had no idea what happened, they started to have a sheet where they actually, whenever they picked up the mug, they had to sign. Okay. And do you remember that in the mug there's written trust? Okay. And okay, this is when things get complicated, right? <laughs> this is when you start thinking, okay, maybe something is wrong. Yeah, maybe something. Is wrong. Okay. Cool. Uh, I want to show you today a little bit also of a project that I was involved with. I don't know if you know about it or not, which is called Living Offices. Uh, so today we'll talk about culture, but we'll also talk about offices, which is one of my areas of passion. Um, this also started, I would say, five years ago, um, when we had a nice company of friends. We were about 25 um, in Porto. It was a tech, uh, tech company. Uh, we also had the agile mindset. So it, I don't know if you know Blip. Mm -hmm. okay. So we were about 25, and it was like, okay, now we need. We had. Uh, we were about to be bought by Betfair. Uh, which was a huge company, and we said, okay, so we are going to grow, but they will have like this um, culture of their own that they will probably will try to bring to us, but we have our own culture and we will grow. How can we grow but still have the same culture? So at that point in time, 
many things were in our heads on how can we keep it, what should we do, um, how can we do with the off, what should we do with the offices so that people still feel like we, we always had the office as like, something that it was like our second home, and that was the we started to the, the, we had to change to a new office uh, prepared already for 150 people. We were only 25. Um, because we, would, we we knew that we were going to grow that grow that much, and it was we wanted to keep that feeling of second office, uh, second home. How can we do that? Having that second home. So this is something that I, I really like about and designing offices, designing culture, thinking how things can happen. Um, and within this process, one of the things that I felt that was really hard was okay. It was really easy to understand. I, uh, probably I don't know if you know some websites like uh, Office Snapshots or something like that that you can just go online and check some of the coolest office in the world. And I was thinking, okay, but I would like to just go and visit my friends around and get to know what is there in Portugal so that I don't need to go somewhere else and I can have someone that I can talk with and I can just go in and actually look and feel how it is. So uh, two years ago, we decided to start this project where we are documenting the what we believe can be some of the best offices to work uh, in Portugal. Um, the idea is just completely for free, of course, so that people could <coughs> just for sharing the information for people to know about it um, and of course this is also on my side because I love to get to, to know people that's why I'm here today probably will have some chat at the end uh, and also I'd like to ha have, have the feeling of different realities and it's super interesting how, e how easy and I don't know if you ever felt this so probably either when you go to a interview or when you go to visit a friend or maybe even today if it's the first time you, you came to hold um, you can tell a lot just by entering a company's office. It's like there are so many things that will tell you a lot of cues about is this the place where I could work or not. Mm -hmm. uh, and this is super interesting, right? So that's why also I think it should be shared. And whenever we are talking, we were talking about culture and how can people, how can we grow culture? So this is what what we decided when we were in in at that point in time. So if we want people to join the culture that we have. We need to show it as much as we can. So we need to take, bring people to the office whenever they want to. They need to come and buy. They can. They need to be here with their friends. So we need to show this so that people understand if this is a place where they want, they would like to join or not. So this is, I think, one of the, the most interesting things that you, that can be done. Sorry, guys. Just one thing here. Uh, cool. Okay, so some some of the ideas, some of the places um, that I visited. Uh, so we were always looking for two things also in this in this perspective. Uh, one is understanding also what the culture is of, of around the office, uh, how is the office used, and um, and also what's the purpose of the company. Um, this is and this is probably one of the, the things that uh, I have been struggling the most uh, during the last years. Which is probably, and if, if you were think, thinking, you think about, if you want to have an identity and a culture, right? so you want to have a set of behaviors like we were saying that are happening in an office, uh, and then what you have as well is that you normally companies would have a set of values that they are looking for in people, right? Do, you, do your company have a set of values that they're looking on in people, or not? Is it clear? Is it defined? Not defined? Oh, what? Not defined. <laughs> Not defined. <laughs> I would say it depends on the company. It depends on the company. Okay. I'm, I'm, I'm asking on the companies that you're in right now. Yes. Is it defined? Do you have like a list of values? Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. Sorry. For the company, yes. For the people. For the people is not known, but there is this set of values. So if you think about it. Um, I understand the idea of having a set of values, so which is something that we are looking for. But imagine that if if everyone in your organization would have the same values, do you think that everyone in your organization have has the same values? Definitely not. But it's really cool because more and more, when we talk about culture, companies tend to hire on values, so they are looking for the same values on people. Mm -hmm. So this is, for me, this is a bit confusing because, and sometimes one of the values is diversity. 
Okay. So, <laughs> I don't know if you get the so, irony. Can you please clarify when you say that companies are hiring based on value? So you would have, like, let's say, uh, of course, that there is a phase that will be more like uh, understanding if technically this person is able yeah. to fit the job description, and then you try to understand is this person able to work with us. But it's more like soft skills. Yeah. Whether just yeah, but you. As well as from a company perspective, like, is this person understands social responsibility? Yeah. Or, yeah, but that really depends because, um, so for instance, you would say that um, some companies would have, for instance, one of our values is uh, fun. And you need to have fun as one of your first top things that you think about as work. Which is not either, again, nothing of these, as we said in the beginning, is not good or bad. Mm -hmm. But just think about it, if you have a defined set of values that you are trying to bring people in, it, it's interesting in one way because it means that, okay, what we were saying, which is, we are trying to bring in people that actually fit the way we would like to work, but then we are trying to find people that are quite the same. Right? And my experience tells me that it's really hard to find people with the same set of values. So just to give an example, um, at the project I'm currently working on, it's for a client with a really, really strong culture. Uh, that strong that when you are at their headquarters, you don't need to read anything about behaviors, and you just start acting like the people there. So the, mm -hmm. the culture is really strong. Okay. The first phase of hiring is technical. The second is soft skills profile match. So this client is a sports brand. So when you go to the red quarters, you see people in meetings with short sleeve shirts, uh, shorts, tennis, uh, even flip-flops, and then this uh, candidate comes to the interview fully dressed with the suit and a tie. <laughs> and even if you mentally you, you tend to, okay, I'm not going to look at this outfit. Maybe if I met this guy in a bar, it, he would be dressed differently. But it instantly felt like mm, this guy won't match. Mm -hmm. And it's just the outfit. Yeah. But it, it might match, right? Then it might match, yeah. But then you have to make a decision. So you have two candidates. One that same level technically, but then mm -hmm. at the at least on the outside it seems to feel better. If your process allows it, okay, so let's meet both of them in the bar or in the beach and see which one fits more. If your process doesn't allow it, you have to make a choice. Should I go with the one with the suit and the tie? are the one that appears to match more the cultures and the values. Yeah. I don't need to, to tell you what happens. So. I think uh, and more and more the understanding uh, and showing the culture within the hiring process, it's super important. I, 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 I've, I've been feeling both with the, the, the clients that I work more closely, especially the ones that are recruiting younger people, that more and more there is a shift on what people are looking when they're looking for a job, right? So I would say that especially if I go to my parents and whenever I tell them that I'm either shifting a job, they would ask me questions that I sometimes don't even know what to answer, which is, is it a stable job? Uh, how many people do you have under you? <laughs> um, how much profit is the company doing right now? Uh, sometimes it's Questions that I didn't even make made myself while I was looking for that job or for the people that I am. And sometimes even pay would come. Of course, it's, it's a need and we all have our needs as, as, uh, as pay and, uh, and money. But a lot of times if, I w if people, I would say even my age, would be sharing today in a dinner time, get together with your friends and start thinking, talking about your companies, most of the people will talk about the culture the company has more than how much profit the company is making more. So the, the topic of conversation would be around culture and how much people would actually like or not to work in there and how fun it is or how nice it is or how much it is related to what I am or how much can I be myself, okay? So I think that's a really interesting question to answer. It's how much can I be myself or do I need to be someone else to be in this company? That's, that's very interesting. Cool. So let, let me show you some, some places, uh, so just, just some random pictures that I took out of 
this project that we have been done leaving offices. By the way, if you have an office that you think that is really cool and that you want to showcase, um, please just contact me. I would love to do it as well. We are just going now for the third season uh, in the next six months, so we will be showing this all around. So th this is from uh, an office in um, which, I don't know if you know the, the brand Prozish? Yeah. Mm -hmm. okay. uh, so I had no idea that uh, Inch was in, which is a very small uh, city in the north of Portugal, which, by the way, is the best part of the country. I, don't know <laughs> <if you're talking laughs> <about that. laughs> I know there are one or two people that agree with me at least. I hope. Um, but I was amazed when we were when we were there, um, especially not only because the conditions are very good, and most of the times we try to find places where the conditions, like the facilities of itself are good for people to work, so they have the needs, the, the basic needs for, for working, of course, and some different places. But it's, it was amazing, so we always talk with a lot of people within the organization, uh, and it was amazing how much people actually uh, liked about it and how much it was related to them. So for instance, one of the things that they have, and a lot of things we, when we talk about offices, we look for perks and for things that are a bit different, uh, but sometimes the perks can just be perks, and sometimes they can just make sense to what the company has. So for instance, they have a, uh, a and I'll show it later, a CrossFit box within the office, which for them makes complete sense. It's not like, uh, so their, their purpose is exceed yourself. So most of the people that actually join the company, they do believe in the idea of uh, working out and having, uh, looking out after yourself and your body and go away, to, uh, away beyond your limits. Uh, and that's the place where they can do exactly that. Okay. Uh, and so most of the office is designed with that in mind, and that's sometimes sometimes what, uh, and especially when we are doing it for LemonWorks as well, uh, with our clients, is that is what we are looking for. And we, we didn't do this; it's, it was uh, it was just them. They started like that. But I think if you are designing an office right now, the first thing that you want to think of, need to think about is what is the concept that you want to design your your organization, your, your office around. And for that, most of the times, you need to understand your culture. You need to understand what exactly are the behaviors that people are looking for. So this is a cool one. This is the, the kitchen area. I, I have some stories, but I'll go around it. Um, this is also um, um, this is an office from a company that I'm very close with. Um, so it, they actually have part of Lemonworks. Uh, it's Mindira. And one of the nice things that they did, and we will talk a lot maybe about this uh, more later, uh, instead, in, this is a company of 220 people, um, and instead of having one big office, what they decided to do is have multiple offices of 15 to 20 people. Okay, all, all the offices are fully autonomous, so they would have at least a, a kitchen area, a relaxing area, uh, working stations, a meeting room, and at least one or two things more. People can float around the other offices, so it's all in the same, mostly all in the same building. They could go to the other offices, but if they want, they can just stay in their own office. Um, the idea is simple, um, and this is also related with the culture that the organization has, which is try to not be like this huge company that, I, I don't know if you ever felt that, if you have ever have been in a company with more than 200 people, probably have felt this, which is getting into the job uh, in the morning, work, walking in, looking at someone and thinking, should I know you? <laughs> uh, are you here for an interview? Uh, can I help you somehow? Okay. So it's to avoid a bit this feeling of you being part of a huge organization, but instead having a comfortable place where only 15 to 20 people and you know who is there. You know who are the people, who are all the people in your office by name and not just faces that you might recognize or not. So that, that's the main purpose around it, and instead of having ju just a huge office. Um, this is very close by. Uh, this is a picture from uh, what if, what, what if I? Do you know what if I? Yeah. yeah. So they have a huge barn facilities, probably it's the best office I've ever seen in Portugal. So everything is top notch on the things that they have. The, they have, I think this is the machine. Yeah, this is, I uh, know this is the water machine, but right side, on the side of the, the, the water machine they have uh, wine, uh, so they have like uh, one of the people there. They like is a wine connoisseur, so every week it changes the bottles, and they have like all this <laughs> culture about wine tasting at the end of the day and everything. Um, food is usually uh, one of the perks. I, I don't know. Do, do you have free food at your office? 
Yeah. Some fruit. There are some offices with chefs. Okay. Uh, I'm not saying it's needed. Uh, a lot of the things again, uh, and this is what we were saying, right? It's uh, and some some of the things that I've seen as well, and some of the things that don't work is when you try to force things just because you want to have perks. You might have a lot of food, but uh, if people will be looking at how much food you're eating, then people will not eat, right? Yeah. Uh, so it's, but yeah, they have different kind of beers, wine, everything. Um, th but th there's a reason for that, okay? So this, the kitchen area, it's a huge area there, if you compare it with the rest of the offices, and it's actually the place where people the most get together. Okay? This is almost every day people would just, it's very, very interesting. So usually when I do this, this project, I stay at least one to two full days in the office so that I actually get the sense of what's happening there. And it's really cool to see like at some point in time that everyone comes to the kitchen area and they just get all together and have that fun time around either the wine, the beer or everything. So it actually, the space itself and the way it's designed, it will create, of course, behaviors. So for instance, if you think about Mindira, the company that I was talking about that has like multiple offices, you are not expecting people to get together, to get all together. So that's, that's not what you're expecting. You're expecting people to actually be in smaller circles. And then you cannot complain that people do not connect all together, right? Because that's what you're designing the space for. That's what you're designing the organization for. You just need to understand what, is this something that people are looking for or not? This is a, I love this picture. Uh, this picture, uh, it was more interesting when I was there than the picture itself. Um, this is Sonai. It's beat. Um, so this is also, uh, I think, for me, an interesting uh, case study. Uh, so Sonai, for the ones that know, and from uh, that are from Portugal, it's probably one of the most traditional companies that we might have. Um, like everything is more about competition, uh, about like formal perspective of working, and and what they're trying to do is shifting a bit because two things. One of them is. Uh, because they probably it's what's happening in the world and they want to follow but also because they wanted to hire more and more younger people and it was getting harder to do that as well so especially in this technology perspective and if we think about agile and everything and then you try to have a very formal office and you need to have an agile environment so that really not sometimes doesn't get along even in us in the other uh, way the office is designed so what they did in Porto is when they started the new technology branch they decided to rebrand it and start an office that would actually have a completely different look and feel from what Sanai is, so that they can actually change their culture through the office itself. So they use the office to actually rebrand re re their culture as well, and by that expecting that the behaviors will be different. So that means that no more they would have, well, they say that they don't have offices, but they do. They have the top level for the administration, which is okay. It's not a secret. It is what it is, right? So it's still. It has, that they have what they call the Shark Tank. So it's the, if you go to, to the, leave the living office pages, you will see that they have. So instead of having a lot of private offices, they have one big private office where all the, the administration gets together. So alongside the workspace that they redesigned. Yeah. Did they also uh, introduce more up-to-date organizational structures and process frameworks? Exactly. Culture for the structure, did it? Exactly. So that, that, that's what, what they were also trying to do with it. Um, or at least what they, are, what they are expecting. Of course, what they, will feel, they are feeling is that there is, they have a, a huge gap, right? They have people that are just joining and that are joining to this. And they have people that have been there for a long time and that are expecting some, some things quite differently. Uh, and usually those have more power, right? Um, but still, I think it's it changed. It's impossible. It's impossible to say if you went and I, I went to their office before this one and to this one. It's not the same company, okay? Maybe it's the behaviors that they have are not so, and you can still have like suited people going into a bean bag, and sometimes it feels it, it's even uncomfortable to see. Uh, yeah. <laughs> but but still, it means that things. If you, if you are in there, if you have been in the other and this one, you can understand that one thing is, it, it, there's no way that you, things are not changing because of that. So I do believe that the office itself and the way it is designed, it can actually have a huge impact. Because if you have like spaces like this, and this is like an informal space, meeting space, so there's no closed door in this one, so you can just go in and talk. 
So there's no no room for private co for private conversations. There is no room that you cannot just close yourself and like, uh, know that there's the firing room. Okay, almost like all companies have like this firing room. So there's no if you don't have that firing room, that that changes a bit what what things uh, what kind of behaviors will happen within the organization, right? Does this make sense so far? Yeah. Okay, so I wanted to talk about uh, one thing that when I'm hiring, um, I try to look for, which I think makes more sense than, so a, 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 lot of thi a lot of times what we are trying to do is we are trying to bring someone to our organization so that the organization still has the same culture. Okay, so we are looking for culture fit. Right? So we want someone to come in and to fit in what we have. More and more, what I believe is that that is really hard. Mm -hmm. And what I believe is that whenever someone joins, the culture will change. So when I'm hiring for my organization or for one of my clients, what I try to understand is not only what the culture is, but what we want the culture to be. And then what I'm looking for is culture contribution. So how can you join our organization and actually have behaviors that would bring her to a stronger culture than we have right now? Does this, it's, it's a different way and there are different questions that need to be made. We can, if anyone wants to talk about it later, we can spend maybe dinner time and some hours about it. But there are different questions that you need to make for one another. But I think it's completely different and the, the way you're looking at it and the discussion that you have with that person, it's completely different if you think about it. It's like, how can you improve the culture that we have by joining us? So what, what are you bringing on? So usually when I, when I ask this question that we are a melting pot, we have a lot of different people, who are you and what will you bring that we don't have yet? You know us already because we showed, the, showed you our company, we showed you who you are, how do you think you would actually benef benefit ourselves and the company as well and the culture that we have. So that, that's a uh, and super interesting. I, I usually get super interesting answers out of that question, and a lot of times they don't make sense. So that's <laughs> cool. Uh, I also don't want to bother you too much. Okay. So we already talked about this. So of course, uh, I think if you think about uh, culture, it's all about behaviors. It doesn't matter to fake it. Uh, you can have a foosball. Uh, a table or a pink or a butter quiche, as we said. Yeah. Uh, but if you only have 10 minutes after lunch, so for people to work to, to play on it, and it's on the other side of the, of the company, <laughs> it really doesn't work. Okay, it really doesn't work. Um, I had also a company that was really cool. They so it was super formal. Okay, it was a super formal company, and but they wanted to change, they really wanted to change. They wanted to have so they, they were. When, when we were there for the first meeting, they had they were searching for very nice couches where people could take a nap after lunch. Uh, so they had like they looked for a very nice furniture, and then okay, we were asking them okay, but how are you planning to do this? Where will this happen? Um, and we talk usually we talk with a lot of people, right? And one of the people that we talked about it was one of the, the managers that have that had a private office, and he was like, okay, one of the problems for me is that people slack a lot, so they don't really work, they don't put all the hours that they should. <laughs> okay, so we had this information, and then we asked, okay, so how, how are you planning this? How are you planning to have like these nice couches and everything? And then they showed me that this area was just in front of the office <laughs> of that manager. And I was like, I don't think that's gonna work. <laughs> I somehow, I don't think that's gonna work. I think you're gonna spend, and this can be, this can be the organization and I've talked with a lot of people feeling like this. It's almost like insulting to have this. Because, come on, I don't have time. Sometimes you don't find that I have the authority to book my own uh, holidays or something. And you're telling me that I can go and play football when I want. Or that I can go to... It doesn't make sense. It doesn't add up. Okay, so it's very important that it's just not like looking at pictures or not having something to then show up in, a, I don't know, living offices or something like that. It's not like that. It needs to happen there. It needs to, to be part of the culture. Otherwise, it's just, it's just worse than it is. Um, talking about culture and behaviors. Uh, and sometimes the most interesting thing is to have organic things that happen and stories. Usually the way uh, I tell my clients that they should talk, should talk about culture is not about words. 
It's not about um, finding the best phrase in the world to describe how we are the best ones, but it's just about telling stories of things that happen in the office. So these guys, these guys are a team, and they decided to uh, every day they have a, a plank meeting. <laughs> okay. So if, if you think that you're very nice and cool because you do a stand-up meeting, try to do a plank meeting and you see how long can you take it. <laughs> okay? So they just do a very quick update on this plank meeting. Uh, and it's, it's their thing. It's, is, there, is it something super special? Maybe not. But for them, that's something on the culture that they, look, they cannot have anywhere else. Okay? This is probably something, and when I talk with them individually, this is something that is part of what they believe it's working for them. And when you have that kind of stories, it's something that tells about your organization and also it creates a huge bond between people. So that, that's the kind of things that usually I'm looking for. So whenever <coughs> I go to a, 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 an organization and they start talking about uh, the values or whatever, I, I just say I don't care. I want to know what are the nicest stories that you have. Tell me the nicest stories that you have. And then we can learn from that. Uh, this is from uh, oh. this is from Subvisual. It's a company in Braga. Okay. Uh, this is also I, I, I would say well, I usually use it as an example because it's a super small company, so it's ten people. Uh, but they actually have a super nice office. Very, it's not expensive at all. Uh, but the idea is that they involve everyone in the process, and they came up with an office where people want to to work in. And that's, I usually use it as an example as well, and especially if there are people already looking into changing their offices, and this is also a methodology that I use, and I, rec I recommend everyone to do, is involve everyone in the process. Because you might think that you're doing the right thing, but if you don't get people together, if you don't, come on, you guys know it. Like, if, if you are with an agile mindset, if people are not involved with it, how can they actually then like the result? Just get a mood board on, just get the ideas of what are the stories of what people need to do in their day-to-day. Just, just understand what it is in there. If you have that information on different people and what they actually need, just think of them as users of the office and what kind of needs that they have. Just If you want to write user stories, whatever you, you need to do so that you understand that, okay, there's something that I need to fulfill as well so that people understand different things. And um, what I usually do, uh, I don't know if you know the, the method Legos use play. The what? Mm -hmm. Lego yeah. series play? Okay. So it's just, I like play a lot, so I usually use Legos for a lot of things. Um, but for, for this specific case, I think it's great. So usually what I do is facilitating a workshop with, the, with teams. And I'm sharing this because I think you can do it as well with your, your organization if, if you think it's a nice thing. And we will just get the floor plans and people will try to say, okay, what they would actually like to see in each part of the office. And of course what happens is that if you have someone from finance and they want a completely different thing that the tech guys want, but then they need to talk about it and they understand what the, what the difficulties are of getting all together, which is very different from you presenting the, 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 the office and then people sitting down and saying, eh, I don't like this, right? Because then they understand why the decisions were taken. <coughs> so let's, let's really go. Uh, this is um, out systems, right? Um, this was for me to talk about the examples of play and how nice or not nice they can be. Um, I think more and more what, 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 what I've been seeing and that people like is that we are moving from offices where we have like either, okay, we think it's, it's an open space or is it uh, private offices or is it cubicles or what it is, to more and more multiple different areas with different purposes. So it's more like you have areas and the areas have purposes. So it's like, and purposes can be different, can be like, this is a silent room. This is a focused area room. And for instance, I think this is the example, okay, this is the prospect, <laughs> not the one. Uh, it can be a focus room, it can be a, a team, a place for stand-ups, it can be a place for quick meetings standing up, it can be a, a, a place for a one full day uh, boot camp that we need to have for, I don't know, Sprint Zero or something from our client. It can be for, but more and more, we think about the offices in these areas of different focus and different purposes. Okay. Right. Uh, this is the the CrossFit that out, out box that I was telling about on on uh, process. So again, find things that actually make sense 
to the culture that you have. So this is this is of course an, an art thing because from one side if you talk with everyone, but you also understand what the purpose of the organization is, but then you know that sometimes, especially if you have a big company, people tend to change and maybe what makes sense today will not make sense in two years time. And for instance, to build the CrossFit box, it's a huge investment, okay? So you need to also take that into consideration and how things will change and does it still make sense if everyone that we, that cha if everyone changes, do we still want to have this or not? Or just, just because of the people that we have right now? Um, of course, again, uh, as I was saying, the most important thing is understanding, is it real, right? This is the, the final question that I make whenever we are planning uh, a restructure on an, or an organization, uh, an office, a culture is, do you think this is real? Do you think this is something that is going to really happen, right? If it's not real, then if it's just a utopia, okay, it's nice. We have the idea of where, where we want to go but then we need to take small steps. What is the next thing that we can do? Uh, and I think there, there are a lot of uh, examples that I've been working with around offices specifically and culture and things that people want to change. Um, and there are some small steps that can be taken. So for instance, I had, this is not the case, but I had, an, an, and this is amazing sometimes, I had an, an off, um, a client which we just did one simple thing. So we had the idea of changing the office and everything, and we decided this is going to be too hard. So for the people, for what they wanted, for everything. And the only thing that we did was to, I, I chose these two couches because we, we actually had these two couches to that office. So we just had these two couches, and it made a, a whole of a difference within the company. Just to have like two couches facing each other. Okay, this was not something that was there, and it had a huge impact in everyone. Okay, so it uh, sometimes can be very small things that have a huge impact within an organization. Um, this is what, what I was talking about, the focus areas. More and more, I would say that uh, an office, speci especially because, uh, do you work in open office? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I believe that most of you work in open office. How many of you think that you work more focused when you stay at home? Are you able to stay at home? Yes. Yeah? So do you tend to stay at home because you want to be focused? Yes. Yeah, sometimes. Yeah. So this is this is I get this everywhere I go. Okay, everywhere I go I get this. So which is weird, a bit weird, right? So I want to do focus work. I stay at home. It's it's not a problem. It it's, it can be the culture of the company, but you need to think about it. Okay, is it something that I want to happen, or can I create a place in the in the office where people can do focus work? And maybe because of course there's no problem of you staying at home and doing focus work, but then you're not there helping the other people as well, right? So it's especially if it's not a completely remote or a super remote first company. If it's a company where people tend to go to work, they are not used to, to, get, con to get connected uh, online, then people will, will feel that you're not there and they will need you while you're not there and it's going to be a pain for the others. If you're remote first, then it's a different thing, but if you're not, then it can be a difficult thing. So creating, um, so this is one of the things that I've been talking the most with the, the, the organizations I've been with, which is creating focus areas where people can actually work and get the work done. Okay, it can be either for one, two, three people max. Okay, but I would say that, that would be the max. Uh, or at least create a silent, silent room where people can go and no one is allowed to talk. And this is the opposite, right? <laughs> um, which, again, it's not right or wrong. Um, I, had, I usually have my comments also when, I, when I'm helping some clients, but this is far-fetched in in Madrid, port, nearby port, uh, John knows. Yeah, I work in that office. Uh, so it's it's a huge office. Uh, I don't know, probably around 1,000 people there. Uh, on uh, right now, right I now. think even more. When yeah. I was there, it was so like it's about two, two levels of open space. So just like, for instance, Facebook or something that they have, want like a huge open space. So it's extremely loud, right? And it's extremely distracting. Um, I think more and more this is a debate or should we on should we have open offices or not. Uh, so this is starting all over the internet again, people discussing about should we have open offices or not. Uh, and again, uh, I don't know what the answer is. I know, again, what I think and from talking with a lot of people, I do think that this kind of places have the advantage of people getting a bit more connected. So I would say that, I don't know if you, uh, for the ones that worked in a big company, Usually, I would have complaints that people that work in here 
already say that the, the tables, like three, three tables away, it's already too far away. So we don't connect as much because they are too far away. I don't know if, if you ever had an example like this, but I had people complaining about this. So they wanted the table just across to them so that then there's collaboration. Um, yeah? I've seen team members that sit two rows away from each other, not top, because they don't sit right next to each other. Yeah. I think actually this concept of do you work from home or do you work in the office has to do with the nature of the work. If the nature of the work is complex, uh, problem solving, and I would argue we tend to be together, but then if there are times where it actually knows exactly what you need to do, it might be better to be slightly insulated so that you can just get on with it. Yeah, it does make sense. For, for a time, yeah, it, do, it does make sense. Yeah, the, the thing is that is the periods of time because sometimes it is just already not a problem. Sometimes it's like for you, it's not a problem solving anymore because you have done it enough, you have the knowledge enough, but it's not the same for the rest of your team, right? Exactly. That's, that can be sometimes the trickiest part. But yeah, open offices do have, still have the idea of transparency that which I think uh, correlate a little bit with most of, for instance, if we think about agile, agile concepts and everything. and people being able to access uh, other people to connect with the, everything that is, is in the, the organization. But still, I think they lack this idea on how can people get focused. Uh, so I think there's some problems here to solve still on how can we design offices so that they actually fit everyone. Cool. There's a cost factor as well, right? It's uh, yeah. a lot more cost efficient to stack people together uh, like we, unfortunately, fortunately we don't have that anymore, uh, as much uh, chickens in the battery. Yeah. Um, but nowadays we know that that is really actually uh, very cost ineffective because it deteriorates collaboration. Yeah. Because people get uh, stressed and burned out over time, you can optimize levels. Yeah, so for instance, I would say definitely that I would try to break it up as much as possible with different focus areas in between. So that would make, so you have the example, so Spotify is a good example on that. So they would have usually a team that would have a meeting room by their side and they would have a, a place around. And then it's more or less separated so that there's also psychology safety within the team and they feel a bit like m more. But of course, that what you have then is that their, that team is going to be, you need to expect that that team exactly in that space is going to be much further apart from the rest of the organization, which is, it's okay. But again, you need to know that the consequences of what you're doing, they're going to impact on, on the organization, right? Vault is actually quite interesting, the games companies, so they actually set up every single desk so it's movable. Yeah. So you can literally move your desk yeah. and be alone or if you want to join a group for a given period of time. So in fact there's a part of their manual and handbook yeah. is this is how you do it. Have you been there? Because yeah. I've been I've been there. Oh, you've been there. So <laughs> that, that, <laughs> it's good, yeah. but um that so I think it, the idea is great, it works for a lot of people there. They loved it. Uh, I think for some people, there's, and it's the same thing of the hot seat perspective. I don't know if any of you work yeah. in an hot seat office, yeah. which is really hard for on psychology safety, which is every day you get there and do I still have my spot? Do I still have my seat? Okay. So it, it, it has, I think it has a great thing, which is, and a lot of people there talk about it, which is very easy for people to get together, move apart whenever they need, but sometimes on psychology safety, having your own spot, and understand where you can go and just that safety can be especially for a certain type of people can be super important my and my super last, stressful my last experience which i i agreed uh, it was a, a good experience in terms of organization of the teams is what you were saying uh, my my scrum team we, we were three scrum teams that were in a space uh, kind of isolated from the rest it, it was the, the floor was divided into two and one of the parts has three uh, scrum teams uh, in, the, in their own spots. So we were divided, not with physical walls, but uh, I don't know, meeting, small meeting yeah. rooms in yeah. the middle, yeah. uh, some, some space between them, yeah. which gives the, 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 the physical uh, orientation in terms of this is a scrum team one, two, yeah. and three, and uh, we don't need any, any kind of with uh, I don't know, HR or yeah. any other team, so it works for us because we have already the, all the, the stakeholders that we need daily for their uh, I, with uh, We were talking about hot seats and I do struggle with hot seats and I try all the time, I try to fight a bit back when uh, some of the organizations are talking about it. Um, sometimes for me what it feels is that like, 
I understand some of the concepts around it, but one of the things that come out of it is almost like if someone just can just come here tomorrow and just get into your seat, even if you go away, like it's almost like you don't have, you don't feel like you're part of it, and that that sometimes that line where of commitment, if you're looking for people, and then it's what I, when it can buy into the culture or not. If you if you're willing for people to feel that the organization is theirs, and then you're telling them at the end of the day, you need to take everything out because, well, some, some, someone else might take your spot. Uh, and I know this this is just on the next day, but it can be metaphorically something a bit different, which sometimes is a bit hard. Uh, so I think that that struggles a bit. Yeah. Don't the focus spots, the spots where you can go and focus, become a kind of a odd seat in disguise in many companies? So a place where the first one that gets there gets the, the place where they can actually focus? Mm -hmm. I, I don't, I, the places that, that I've seen having it, I, don't, I didn't see that problem that well. I, I, s I think that people tend to use it for a long time, mm -hmm. yes, but not like, okay, I'm hiding away. It's almost like, okay, this morning I need some time for myself and I'll, I'll be working. We, uh, in I, had, I had a, a kind of a, in my, uh, uh, my, my office when I was, and uh, it's like we, we just used that room. It was a, a closed room with a glass, so what everyone was seeing that there, there was someone there, and that they, they was just using it for conference calls or some some, some small uh, yeah. small meeting uh, with two persons at most, and uh, it, it is really a bit uh, positive in, in their terms, yeah. and uh, there were no views on that. that was, was it a development company? Yeah. No. And yeah, I, th I think I'm done with what I wanted to show. Uh, do you guys have some questions at this point in time? Things that maybe were not answered from what you were looking for when you decided to come here, or some topics that you still want to discuss? Yes. Yeah. Uh, you, you made an example, but I would like to, to hear more about how you, the company had a space totally designed to defend a value and a behavior, but it didn't happen. Uh, some other examples about this, like like the the Pebolin really really far from the yeah. <coughs> from the workers, and how leadership impacts the culture even more than the actual space. Any examples on on that also? Okay, let me start with the second one. Okay. Um, okay, so we will struggle a little bit. Uh, I, I think by leadership you're trying to say. The people that have more power within the organization, which I would probably defer away from leadership, which can be some anyone else within the organization. Yeah, I, would, I would mean like the top level. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Level. So people with power within the organization. Exactly. The yeah. people that we think, okay, if I do something that doesn't go along with the culture, that guy will certainly notice, and he's the one that has power to reprimand yeah. me, like the ultimate power. To that's that's the that's definitely if you want to change a uh, culture i think those people if if the company has those kind of people that tend to look for and tend to use power uh i i do think that the culture needs to be on board with what they believe otherwise it's going to be very hard because it's just like what you said people are following up to them and following up to what they would think about what they're doing because they know they call the shots so there's there's no way around it um, and, and I'm having an, an interesting case at the moment, which is a company where the, the so the, the CEO um, so he understands that to hire, especially he's on software perspective, to hire software people, he needs to have a, a more nice office. Okay, he needs to have an office where um, almost like it's a playground. Okay, he, he thinks that that's what people need, um, but he doesn't believe it, right? So he doesn't believe in that. Um, so what he's, he's almost saying is almost like, okay, if it's behind that door, I'm not going behind that door, <laughs> and it's going to happen there. So that playground is going to happen there behind that door. And, and I'm thinking to myself and talking to him, it's just like, do you think that's gonna work? Because if you don't believe it, okay, you understand that it might be needed to hire new people, but then uh, how actually are the behaviors that you're expecting people to have? Uh, and how do you think that you will react when you will see someone laying down at four o'clock and you go to the office? 
or how do you think that you you will feel if people are playing uh, PlayStation while at, while it's I don't know 11 o'clock in the morning and there is a project that is that's running running out. Uh, I, I'm not saying that if you are shutting the door, then you you don't know anymore what's going in there. So you need to want to be there. Otherwise, it's going to be really hard for both of you, for them and for you. Uh, and that's I think that's the mature conversation to have, which is okay. Let's go to the limits of what you believe. Otherwise, it's going to be really hard. We can, of course, we can do. We can have lots of things. I can design super great things here. But if you're not aligned with those things, then it's going to be really hard. And it's 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 going to have the impact exactly the other way around, just like we were talking about, which is people will have the stuff and they will feel like using them will be almost like this is this makes no sense to use this because then people will be looking at me. And for instance, we we had it was really interesting. I have an example. I just just thought about it. Uh, to the other question, which is when when Betfair acquired Blip, uh, so Blip is a, a P P Portugal uh, started co bootstrap company, but then was acquired by a giant. Um, and one of the things was because of the culture that the company had, which was really interesting. So at the moment, because most of us were really young, we had Playstations, we had scooters. It was almost that point in time, also that uh, those videos of Nerf guns and everything they they were having. So it was. I think, I'm not sure that's what an organization needs, but I think at that point in time it was really relief that you could do that in a company. That you could just go around with a Nerf gun and just fire someone else. I'm not sure if it's something that people really wanted, but I think just the ability of doing it, it was giving pleasure to people because, look, I'm at work but I can do this fun stuff. Um, but what I was going, uh, so we had that, we had uh, scooters, uh, we had a PlayStation, and they implemented all those things. So they thought, okay, they have a nice culture, let's buy some scooters, let's buy a PlayStation, let's buy whatever. So they did all that, and what do you think happened to those things? Because ju Just because they bought them. Someone broke their leg using a scooter? <laughs> <laughs> no, we actually got someone that got into a wall. <laughs> uh, what happened in my office? Someone used a scooter, yeah. broke their leg in three different places. Wow. Uh, scooters were very quick, yes. <laughs> okay. Uh, so of course they were not used, right? Because it's... It was not part of their culture. I think, and for the first case, I think the most of the, the things I think can be these two things. One, it's because somehow someone within the organization decided something, but it's not aligned with what the organization wants. So that's when things are not used. So sometimes can be. Um, I remember these things, and probably you know some companies that had this this as well, which is finding a creativity room. So. All the office is black, and then we have a creativity <laughs> room in color. Of course, I'm using colors as a as a metaphor, but it's almost like this. So, of course, that if you need to create a creativity room, something is wrong, right? <laughs> yeah. And this is the thing. So sometimes it happens. I'm not saying that a room cannot be prepared for being even more creative, <laughs> but if you're thinking, oh, this is the place where we go to have ideas, yeah. and it's yeah. the only place where we have ideas. <laughs> okay. Um, so I, I have a case just like that, which is they had they started they had like a huge project before we got there. They had like a uh, meeting room that they prepared for whenever they have the clients there and everything. And most of the people don't use any of the things that that, that are in there. So they have like these uh, data shows that are multimedia and everything, and they can do things around. No one uses them. Why? Because one, people were not involved in the process. Two, because a lot of things don't make sense in there, right? So it's it's. I think it's a mixture of all these. So when there is uh, the more the more further apart the people are from the people taking the decision, the more they are not involved. The more the, it's not a real decision. Right? So when when that question that I was talking about is this something real? Is this something that is going to happen? Can we make stories out of this? I'm not sure. I'm, I, did I answer your question? Cool. Any other? Yeah, I have yeah. one. So a lot of the guys at high level works, you know, they expect some shift in behavior of the people that you know, they are working for them. And a lot of times they come to the conclusion, wow, what we need is a new office, you know, in order to change things around. So, and a lot of times it's not that, I guess, you know, mm -hmm. you, after you spend two days there or three days, you just see, well, you know, like they have a toxic culture, they can manage and yep. so on. How do you, you know, do you say to the people that are paying you that, you know, like, you just have crap culture because you have toxic management or something like that. Okay, so usually we don't we we, we do that without uh, charging the first phase. Okay. Without what? So that, that starts with there. So we tend to do the first phase without charging. 
so that we actually can understand if it's something that we can do together or not, and if it makes sense or not for us. So I would also, there are some projects that probably I would not get involved in, because I don't think that the intention and the purpose would align with what we believe, even if they would pay us. Mm -hmm. So that, that would not make sense to us and what we believe uh, as an organization. I think what you're saying is a bit different, which is when you they want stuff? to change, but I, we don't see that just changing the office is going to do that. Um, so sometimes what, what, I, what I recommend is, is something like this. Why do you want to change the complete office? Start by adding two couches and let's see what happens out of there. So just, just be agile. Just, just do step by step. Just do a small thing. Let's see what, what happens out of that. And then we can learn from it. That's good because you changed to this picture and uh Right, right before you said that this made a huge impact, but you didn't say what. What, what was the huge impact? Yeah. Be only with those. <laughs> it, it's, it's as simple as there were four people that actually never had a place to talk before this. It, it, it can, because they didn't have a meeting room, so in the office, and there was no place for these four people to meet. <coughs> and it, it seems like very stupid, right? They could meet anywhere. They could even meet at their tables, but that was not there. And the physical place, and of course it was not at that because we talked with them and what the problem was and why they were not they were not engaging. So it's the two things together. But it was as simple as that. It was a meeting that was not happening because of not having a place for it to to hold it. Okay. Uh, what, sorry. It's okay. what about when uh, the company has several offices that have different cultural aspects? To them? Yeah, I would be amazed if you wouldn't do like that. <laughs> Tell me a company where, wherever you go, they might look the same. So you can have a Starbucks uh, of an office, but I would say embrace it. I would say embrace it. If it's a different culture, make it that it is actually a different culture. Don't try to make it the same, because then you're, you're trying to bring people into something they're not. That, that, that's my perspective, okay? And I, I know that sometimes it might not be aligned with maybe a Starbucks view of I want every place to be the same. So for instance, I don't think that every office needs to, and this is of course a metaphor, but I, I don't think within an organization, every office needs to be to have the same chair because you have different people and people might like different chairs. So it's have you ever uh, did a project for a co-working space? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, Yes and no. So we did the proposal, but I think we didn't actually uh, finalize it. What's your opinion about the fact that the co-working spaces are getting uh, all over the place right now? Um, I'm going to just say a little bit. That's the, the final question. But from my point of view, having worked in one, um, imagine I had uh, like 50 companies. One of them is here. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, and I had to fit the culture of the co-working space, and each company would have their own culture, right? I noticed in the beginning that they looked for the co-working, so the co-working would provide them a, a, the culture, yeah. you know? So I don't have to take care of the couch. At couches. least there, there's already a couch, there's already there's a meeting, couch, very nice meeting exactly. room. But then step by step, they want something a bit different and more aligned with what they are. <laughs> but well. then you have other companies there that want different things. Yeah, and then you have the flip-flops and the, the <laughs> the company that wears flip-flops and the company with suit and tie. So you have both in the same space. It's a bit tricky and... Uh, That's as much tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> no, I think it's a super interesting uh, idea. I think you have, you can do it both ways. You can, I think you can either say, no, this is who we are and where we want to stand. If you want to stay, you can stay because that you might have an office that already attracts a very specific kind of people. So that can be the idea of the co-working, or you can do the other way. You can do it in a way that okay, we we have this as a almost a warm shell, and we are helping. We want you to actually get it into the what we, you want, and then the others know that when they get in, that okay, they will have to leave with whatever is in there, whatever is in there. So it's part of the of the deal. I, I don't think it's an easy answer, and especially because if you have this idea of having uh, of having like. So it's different if you have a co-working where you have individuals and freelancers, or you have a company there. So it also makes it makes it a bit different. Right? Okay. So the, the co-working space where um, Adventures with Agile in London are, uh, they have both an area that is for individuals that come, yeah. and it's more open space, and they also have focus areas. And then they have a separate area with um, rental offices, 
but the overall design that they chose for their container is all modern and has you know, state-of-the-art yeah. technology and everything. Um, but it, it has a nice um, sort of uh, wood wood touches and elegant design, but it's very compatible with all sorts of different than microcultures that the organizations bring in. Uh, and you could see everything because everything is uh, glass doors, so you have a nice open feel. But uh, there are um, organizations there that are suited and booted, and they have their own little culture, and it works for them. And next door, you have an organization that works on fitness products, and they um, had their own little interior design, and they work side yeah. by side, and it, somehow it works. And it's actually really nice to work through because you can but see. But it's it probably more it like. It's not an open space, right? It's more like they they have offices yeah. within. We've so they have a, it's a more, more like a WeWork perspective, where it's yeah. an open area for relaxing yeah. and everything, and then offices all around. So right or yeah, yes, and then a general area for okay. freelancers. Freelancers, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Purpose. So it's almost creating. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Anything else? Yeah. One question: What do you think it makes a difference if you want to improve collaboration? <laughs> uh, okay, if you want to improve collaboration, that's a question. Um, I would say one of the things would be that people feel that they actually have autonomy to take decisions uh, because sometimes. What, hap what I think can be a barrier for collaboration is that you think you're working for someone else mm -hmm. instead of with someone else, right? Uh, and if you don't have the autonomy then to take the decision about upon the things that you're working, then it, it can be conflicting in this perspective. I think that's one of the things. Um, I would say that on the, the office design can be something that actually does have a, a huge impact there. So have places that are comfortable and that people feel like they it's safe to talk within themselves. Okay, I would say that's super important. I would say that when I look for an office door that's more important for me is safe, safety, so that people feel safe there. Um, what else? Yeah. And trust. But trust comes from a lot of things, right? It's yeah. it's super hard to get trust. Um, I will say especially for our, it depends also from culture to culture, and I mean this more like on uh, national culture ones, I would say that we tend more to gain trust than to and to acquire trust from someone which when, when there are other cultures that trust by default. So I wouldn't say that we trust by default. So I think we need to have steps into trust within people, at least here with the, with the most cases I know. Um, and I would say that acquiring that trust is what actually happens that uh, will lead on to collaboration to happen in a healthy way. And I think there's a lot of things to do there, right? And especially, if, I, I don't know what your role is, but especially if you can be a leader, either if you have a management or not position, but if you can be a leader within the, the teams or the people that you're working with, I think there are a lot of small things that can be done to increase trust, like even showing some vulnerability from yourself, uh, understanding, like sharing stories, um, going for like very small things, like having that plank time or whatever plank time means to your team, those are the things that build trust within, and then after that trust, I think collaboration is just, it just comes off within. If you have a group of friends, they will tend to collaborate with each other. Right. And just a quick, um, the experience that we have when we are uh, getting a transformation into our job, um, is getting everyone in the same location, in the same space, in the same area, area space. Uh, and that's the big, huge difference between having our own product owner sitting there with a left team, in the, in the middle of the left team, a left team, instead of a part in the, some place, even in the, in the same room, but in the other opposite uh, side of the room. You will have a huge collaboration. You will have a real transformation in terms of behavior, because you feel that the product owner is in your scrum team, which is uh, working with you in collaboration, not uh, demanding the team. That uh, the product owner came with uh, some requirement and go up, go to the room, talk to that team. This is a completely different thing that the product owner is sitting there and just say, hey guys, I have some uh, requirement here. Can, I, can someone uh, talk to me about that? In the same place. It's totally different. Collocation, collaboration. I don't know if I if I managed to answer, but yeah, uh, 
I was trying More to specific. figure out uh, in terms of uh, office design okay. because um, I think it's a, a very uh, important issue. Mm -hmm. So what can can an office uh, be designed to improve collaboration? How you can have a very nice kitchen. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Food tend to bring people together. Yeah, okay. that's true. <laughs> that's, 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 that's from my experience, most of the teams that the, the, the places that have good collaboration, they have a nice kitchen area where people can just sit and relax and talk about things. Do you think it's something that is real specific for our Portuguese culture, or is it something that is? Yeah, I don't have data enough, enough to answer that. I think in our culture it does work. Yeah, I don't have I enough. We'll work in I don't have British enough data culture. to. I think if uh, we not, compare not with British culture, uh, as you were saying, <laughs> it's it's completely different yeah. because we tend to lunch together to stop for one yeah. or two hours to talk. They normally they eat at desk, for example. Yeah. It's a completely different culture, I would say. Yeah. Even, Even though you can have bar inside, probably. <laughs> <laughs> for example, that would work much much better than here in Portugal. Yeah, yeah it's, it's yeah. you need to adapt. Yeah, then it's of course finding the people that you have and what makes sense to the people that you have. And yeah. So I would say that sometimes a lot some things that I've seen in this these organizations that do work very well for them, it would be things that we wouldn't have in a normal uh, company in Portugal. So sometimes you can also create your subset culture within the, the national culture. And you're saying, okay, the UK, but then in the UK, who are the people working there? Are they British or are they, are they from yeah. other countries? And maybe they don't have it because it's the culture that they saw happening, but if they have a kitchen, they would change the way they work. So I don't know. So it's, I need to be there. I need to keep be hands on, talk with people, understand. Uh, but I think that's that. From my advice, that's the most important thing: is just talk with instead of trying to understand what can be, just talk it, talk it with people. Just have sessions about it and discuss it, and you will find it out. You will find out what what hap what really works for the people you're working with. Okay. Okay, I'm done with the talking. Okay, I've done it so much. Uh, more than I